Okay, today I'm going to go ahead and show you in Inkscape. I just pulled in a pattern, um, and this is how it looks um, after I've pulled in the projector file. This is how they have it. There's still some folded pieces. It's not an updated. It was they took an AO file and lined up all the grain lines, um, so it was an older pattern. Um, but I don't want to take it to my material and have it all spread out like that and cut out like that. I want to arrange it so. Um, I can make use of all my material. I also am using a material for my stash, and I wanna see if I have enough material to make this particular pattern. So I'm just gonna demonstrate how I would do that. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and start doing is um, unfolding some of those pieces. Okay, so here I am. I'm gonna go ahead and start unfolding. Um, when I first um, select, I try to select a pattern piece, and it, it selects all of that. So to ungroup, again, I'm just gonna put Shift, Control, G, and I'm going to keep doing that until it ungroups everything um, in there. And I pushed it about three times and it started looking like it's ungrouping um, here. So I can click off of it and click on it again. And I still see lots of things grouped together. So again, shift, control, group. And sorry, you hear my toddler in the background. Um, she's working with me today here. Okay, so now I select it. And if I move, and you notice I move and the instruction goes away. Oops, I want those instructions to stay there. Control Z, undo. It's going to move it right back. Um, and then you could hold the shift and click the instructions, or you can draw a whole uh, square around it by clicking and dragging it. And then I'm going to push Control G, and it's going to group that whole piece together here. Um, and now I have that whole piece. What it did leave down here was the size. There is the 18 month size. And that left it down here. That's okay. I don't really need that. Um, in fact, I can just delete it and it's going to delete that size. I already know I'm working with just one size. <clears throat> Again, um, if you haven't looked at how to unfold pattern pieces as its own tutorial, but uh, I'll quickly go. I'm just going to push control G and I need to flip it horizontally. So I push just the letter H. It'll flip horizontally. There are arrows up here as well that will flip it horizontally and that will flip it vertically. Um, it looks really funny here because I need to move it um, and I want to snap it right together here um, on there. And usually it says cusp to cusp. So um, I want to put it right together and then I have that piece unfolded um, I could select it all and push control G it's gonna group it all back together um, and you can also clean it up so you don't have instructions on both sides um, if you want again that's just ungrouping and deleting things is there so I'm gonna go ahead and unfold a few of these pieces so we can get started doing pattern Tetris Okay, while I was uh, working here, I wanted to look at a few things with you. Um, I pulled up the document properties, and mine is already here, but you can also find it by going to File, Document Properties, and it will pop up. Um, you might want to change your display units uh, to what you want to work in, which is, for me, inches. Um, and also down here where it has the width and the height. Don't worry about that right now. We're going to change it to inches. You want to change it to units. Don't worry about the page size. Um, anything like that. Um, if you want guides, you, you can. I, I don't I don't use guides. Um, you can use a grid if you want. I don't find it that useful. Um, and then snapping. Snapping is nice. I noticed my snapping was off. Um, I like to snap them close together. It's kind of a personal preference. Try it on and off um, on how you like it um, and see how it goes. But there's, there's lots of things in there. Um, that you need, but page, you're, we're gonna come back to use this to reset size page to content, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Uh, but do make sure you change your units to how you want. Okay, I just want, I came over to this circle skirt that I'm working on, um, and I just wanna show you some things that you can do. You can cut it on the fold. This one has a double fold. You can cut it on the fold, or you can open it up um, as much as possible. Uh, to cut it that way. Um, to do that, I just push uh, control duplicate it and then, you know, you can flip it with the arrows. You can flip it uh, vertically or horizontally. Horizontally is H. So if I flip it horizontally, oh, I moved the wrong one there. I'm going to take uh, this piece and if it will let me, there we go, and line it up. Uh, right there just as if it was being cut and again control D duplicate and maybe this time I want to flip it vertically um, and then I come up and 
I could bring it up here and see I'm making the whole circle skirt and I can make sure that it fits um, on my material um, again so again you can repeat duplicate and uh, flip it horizontally uh, in this case and well, on this material, I might be able to cut out a full circle skirt <laughs> um, on here. But it's the same thing as if you were to imagine double folding uh, the material. You can lay it all the way out um, on your material. You could still cut on the fold the material. If you scroll down to the bottom of the tutorial, I talk about how you can cut on the fold. Um, but for pattern Tetris, you could lay this out on your fabric and make sure you had enough fabric for a circle skirt in this case. Okay, the next step is to create your digital fabric, and I'm just going to do that by drawing a rectangle. Um, so I know my fabric that I have in my stash, I have a, um, I have about two yards. I don't think I'm going to need that much. It is, I measured it, it's 44 inches. So if you have something in your stash already, um, you'll want to measure that. I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. And right now I'm just drawing, I'm not worrying about how big it says it is. Um, I'm going to show you how we're going to change a few things. Um, first, we can change um, the fill and stroke. So let me get over here. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to my fill and stroke um, tab. I don't want it a dashed line. Maybe I want it as a solid line. Um, so I'm going to keep it as a solid line. And then you could change the color if you want of your fabric. Maybe this will help you remember which fabric you want to use. Um, mine's kind of like pastel, so I'm going to choose yellow. It really is up to you. I wouldn't fill it in. Um, because when you are projecting from it, I don't want you to have a hard time seeing your pattern pieces. So I would just do the outline. I know it's kind of fun to put a pattern in there, but I would just do the outline so you can see it when you, the ultimate goal, goal is to be able to project this, um, on there. Okay. So I'm going to come back to my rectangle, select the rectangle. Um, it changed to millimeters. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to change it back to inches. Um, here and then we have the X and the Y are the location of that rectangle. So the X moves it horizontally, the Y moves it vertically, and then we have the W that's the width of the actual rectangle and the height of it. So this is going to be the width and the height of your fabric. Um, like I said, my fabric is 44 inches um, wide. I measured it. Um, so it's 44 inches wide, and I'm going to say I have a yard, 36 inches on there. Okay. Um, and so that yellow outline is the fabric that I have. Let me zoom out so you can kind of see my pattern pieces are down here. I have my fabric um, all here. And this is where you get to start puzzle piecing it all together. So now that I have already unfolded everything, I can come and I can start placing all my fabric or, or my pattern pieces on and trying to figure out how close you can get them. Now, once you get them on there and you want to get them really close, um, I click on it. You can use the X and the Y. See how the X kind of shifts it horizontally. Um, oh, sorry. I minimized the screen. Um, it shifts it horizontally and, um, you can also go vertically up and down if you just need little movements. Uh, you can also use arrow keys, um, to move it around um, and get it in there if it's clicked on there. Okay, so I can use my arrow keys and you can get it close as you're comfortable with. Um, but again, it's whatever you're comfortable with in your own cutting and laying out and how your fabric moves or not. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm just going to go ahead and get more of my pattern pieces on there. Um, now that I've showed you kind of how you can move them, again, feel free to kind of group them together so you can move them together. Don't forget to control Z anytime you move something that you don't want moved. Okay, I'm just about finished here. What I do want to take is I do want to take one of the um, size squares and put it on a pattern just so I can check the scale when I'm in Dolby. I love to have just a quick check. And then I can clean up all this other um, information I don't need anymore. Just delete it off. You don't need and then finally, I just uh, grouped all my pattern pieces together. Now, this is just an example. I haven't even looked at that. <laughs> Some things are cut out of 
um, main material, so I'm going to cut them out of lining, uh, but this is just for example purposes here, so, <laughs> so don't worry. But you can see I kind of put that circle skirt on there. I can cut on the fold later if I want, but I know I have enough fabric um, for it. So now that I have this selected, what we're going to do is come over to Document Properties, and I'm going to go to the page, and um, down it says this arrow right here, Resize Page to Content. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. What we're going to do, and I also want margins. Um, I'm going to put, uh, I want some scroll room. So I'm going to put about uh, 20 inches um, around all my corners um, for there. But it will resize it to uh, my fabric that I have here. Okay, and then when I'm ready to do that, I just push resize page to drawing or selection. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to come show you what it looks like. Now let me zoom out. Um, and this is my whole page, so when I save it as a PDF in Adobe, um, it will save it just like this. Um, and that's how we'll pull up that yellow line I know will be my fabric. Then I can lay out my fabric and just start cutting. Um, just like that. And just kind of refresh your file. Um, and then you can do save as um, to save it. Anytime you want to import uh, more uh, patterns, if you are putting a different pattern on your same fabric, you could import another pattern and put it right on there. If you don't have enough space on this, you can always, what I can do is I can um, select all that and I can um, copy it and I can create a new uh, a new document and put that in there as well. Um, so that's just kind of a quick overview.